Nicodemus! Next on the Gospel Bill Show. Oh, Mark, I think he knows what we're up to. I don't know if he knows or not, Nicodemus. Tell you what, I gotta find those fellas. See, the deal is Bad Jack Sludgeon's been seen down at the river in the old Hawkins place. Bad Jack Sludgeon, the killer? That's the one. All right, hold it right there, boy. <laughs> oh, no! Bad Jack Sludgeon! The Gospel Bill Show, featuring Gospel Bill, Nicodemus, Barkamaeus, Miss Lana, T.U. Tutwater, and the entire Dry Gulch Gang. Well, I guess you heard that Parson Twatter's coming to preach tomorrow. Oh, I know it, Gospel Bill, and I'm so excited. I'll tell you, every time I hear that fella preach, it gets me so excited, I'd do anything for the Lord. Oh, I know, I can hardly wait for tomorrow. Hey, Nicodemus. Howdy, folks. Nicodemus, guess what, Nicodemus? What? Parson Trotter's gonna preach tomorrow. Oh, yes, that's great. Hey, and he's gonna be counting on you to sing a special song, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, 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 I can't sing tomorrow. Well, now, wait a minute. Is there something wrong with your voice? Uh, no, 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 my voice won't be here. I mean, uh, uh, Miss Lana, can I talk to you for just a minute? Well, sure, Nicodemus. What can I do for you? Uh, Miss Lana, you got any fishing hooks? Well, sure I have fishing hooks, Nicodemus. Uh, Miss Lana, shh, just get the fishing hooks. Okay. There you go, Nicodemus. How much are they? That's 10 cents worth. Okay. Go. Thank you. Nicodemus, what's the matter? Uh, oh, nothing, Miss Lana. Just be quiet about these fishing hooks, okay? I I'll be seeing y'all. Yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Hey, Miss Lana. What's the matter with him? Well, I don't know. It was all about some fishing hooks. Fishing hooks? Fishy, fishy in the brook. I'm gonna get you him all about. Hey, Barkamaeus. Oh, I got a meal. Guess what? Old Parson Trotter's gonna be here at priest tomorrow morning. Oh, that's great. He had a service down in Dripping Springs and it canceled out, so he decided to come here. Great, great, great. Hey, now listen, I'm gonna ask you to take the offering for him tomorrow morning. How about that? Me? Take yeah. the offering? Oh, gosh, Bill, that would just be great, but uh, there's a little bit of a problem, you see. I can't do it. You can't do it? No, I'm gonna be busy during that time of the service. I just can't help you out. You have to get somebody else. Well, I'm real sorry to hear that, Barkmas. Yeah, me too. Me hey, too. you getting ready to go fishing? Uh, fishing? Whatever gave you that idea? Well, you got a fishing pole behind your back. What fishing pole? That one right there. Oh, oh, this one. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it's a pretty fishing pole, don't you think? Well, yeah, it's a good. When are you going? Oh, it's a beautiful fish pole. It'll probably catch a lot of fish. It probably will. When are you well, going? Well, I gotta go, Gossip Bill. I'll see you later. You didn't answer my question. I gotta meet somebody. I gotta go. See you later. The Gospel Bill Show continues after this. a leopard? That's close, but if you said yes, you're wrong. It's a jaguar. Jaguars are the New World cousins of the leopards. Although they look much alike, there are some differences. Jaguars are stockier and somewhat heavier than leopards. Jaguars have larger concentrations of black spots than do leopards. Some jaguars appear to be solid black, but they're really not. The spots on a black jaguar's coat can be seen clearly if you look closely enough. Jaguars are found throughout Mexico, Central, and South America. But at one time, they ranged as far north as Arizona, New Mexico, and California. I'm sure glad that jaguars don't live near me. How would you like to meet this guy on a dark night? Jaguars are expert fishers and swimmers, and they prey upon deer, fish, tapirs, and pigs. They have even been known to attack and kill alligators. But jaguars do not attack human beings or puppets. Thank goodness, that makes me feel a whole lot better. Imagine what would happen if a jaguar tried to wash away his spots. Do you suppose that he could? Well, all his washing and scrubbing would be in vain. His spots are there for good. That reminds me of another kind of spot. 
Sin makes a spot on your spirit when you do something wrong. And all the washing and scrubbing in the world won't do any good. In fact, there's only one thing in all the world that can cleanse a heart of its sin. And that is the blood of Jesus. Jesus' blood was shed so that our sin spots could be washed away. And if you haven't already, ask Jesus to come into your heart. He will take away your sin and make you a new creature. Well, so long, Mr. and Mrs. Jaguar. I like you right where you are, in that cage. I'm gonna catch a bigger fish than you. Oh, uh, you ain't even dreaming of the fish that I'm gonna catch. You can just dream on. Oh, uh, I'm gonna catch it. You just wait and see. <laughs> but something's kind of bothering me, Barker Man. I know. What is it? Would you please tell me? Well, I mean, after all, we're gonna be going fishing on Sunday when we ought to be in church, and Parson Trotter's gonna be there, and I mean, Gospel Bill and all them folks, so what are they gonna think about us? Oh, dick it is. It doesn't hurt to miss church every once in a while. Now, listen, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go up on the river by the old Hawkins place. Yeah, that's what we'll do. And nobody will know we're there, and no one will ever see us, see? What do you think? Yeah, well, that, that place's been abandoned for years. Yeah. Hey, you're on, Barker, man. Okay, it's... let's get our stuff, and let's get ready to go. Sheriff, Sheriff, you gotta do something. You gotta do something. I saw him, Sheriff. I saw him. Hold on to calm down. You saw who? Old Jack Sludgeon down at the Hawkins place on the river. No, wait I saw him down there. You're talking about bad Jack Sludgeon? That's right, Sheriff. You gotta do something. You gotta do something. Down at the Hawkins place. That's right, Sheriff. All right, well, I'll ride out there and have a look. I appreciate you telling me. I'd do anything to see him back in jail. Miss Lana? Have you seen Nicodemus or Barkamaeus? Well, I sure haven't. I haven't seen hide nor hair of them. I tell you what, I gotta find those fellas. See, the deal is, Bad Jack Sludgeon's been seen down at the river in the old Hawkins place. Bad Jack Sludgeon, the killer? That's the one, and I gotta ride down there and check it out, but I can't leave town without having somebody in charge of the jail. <sighs> Well, if they come in, I'll sure tell them. Yeah, I wish you would, Miss Lana. I gotta find those fellers, but if I can, I gotta ride out there anyway. Uh, well, you be careful. All right. I wonder where those fellers are. Bartimaeus! Nicodemus! Oh, Mark, I think he knows what we're up to. I don't know if he knows or not, Nicodemus. Mark and Miss, I'm just afraid Gospel Bill's gonna get mad if he finds out we skipped church and went fishing. No, he won't get mad. I'm not gonna do it, Mark and Miss. Oh, no, Nicodemus, you deserve a break. You've been working really hard. Now come on and go fishing with me. Come on. Oh. All right. <laughs> Boy, am I ever sleepy. I hardly slept at all last night. In fact, I shivered half the night, not from being cold, but from being scared. I know why you couldn't sleep. Well, you do. How do you know, Mrs. Smarty Pants? Because you watched a scary movie last night on The Late Show. That has nothing to do with it. Then what were you scared for? You sat here and you watched that scary movie and you were scared when you went to bed. Now, wait a minute. I was that was Scary movies don't make me scared. Then why did you yell for Mom three times last night to come up and turn the light on in your room? Well... Well, it's just because I thought there was someone in my room. Well, Eugene, you got to learn something. If you think about scary things, you're going to have fear. you got to get rid of fear by thinking on good things. Now, wait a minute, Jeannie. You don't think I was scared just because I saw that old movie, do you? That's exactly why you were scared. You had to be careful what you feed your spirit. Yeah, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Feed your spirit. It doesn't hurt to watch a scary movie every now and then. Well, I sure wanted to see those fellers. Guess I'll just have to leave my note. Oh, Parker Mass, do you think he knows we're going down to the river and skipping church? I don't know, Nick Davis, I don't know. Well, I'll be at the river. Oh, oh he's coming. He must have went the other way, Barker Mass. Come on, let's go see what that note says. Oh, let's see what it says. Gone to river, be back soon. Oh, 
old Bartimaeus. I'm afraid he knows what we're up to. Oh, Nicky, don't worry about it. Let's just go to the old Hawkins place. He'll never find us there. Yeah, you're right. Nobody ever goes there. Come on, come on. Watch it. Finally get some sleep. Come on, Bark, it's over here. What? Come on, Bark, Look right. at this old place. Oh, man. I thought we'd never get here. Oh, it sure is decrepit. Mm -hmm. oh. Wow, Bark, look at this place. Yeah, it's filthy. Who? Yeah. Well, it'll sure fit our purposes. Yep, sure will. Let's drop this grub yep. and let's go get some serious fishing. You bet. Up. Come on, let's I'm go. Gonna get a big old bass. See if those boys left me. Ah, oh, fool. Mm. Good. Mm. Uh, a horse. Somebody's been here all right. Well, from the looks of things, there's more than one of them. Hey, Jonas, good to see you, man. Where you been? Well, uh, uh hi there, uh, Simon Peter. Well, uh, well, it's good to see you, too. Real good. Yeah, hey, we've been missing you lately at church. Haven't seen you there in a Sunday or two. Well, uh, well, we've been real busy. I uh, had to work one Sunday, and then we went to see uh, Grandma all the other Sunday, and, uh, well, a couple of times we had to take the kids up to the Sea of Galilee, you know, a little skiing and stuff like that. Uh, we've been real busy. Yeah, I know how things can be like that. But, hey, Jonas, really and truly, you need to realize how important coming to church is. I mean, we've been missing you. I mean, you're a real part of what we're doing. Well, uh, yeah, I know, Peter, but uh, you don't know how it is. We just get busy. Yeah, I I know, but you know what? Those are important things, coming to church, hearing the Word of God. I mean, it'll help you. Yeah, I know, but, uh, well, I guess I'll just be honest with you. I've been having a hard time living this Christian life. I'm just about ready to give up on it. Give up on it? But what for? Well, I just can't do it. I mean, sometimes when I'm on the job, I get mad and lose my cool, say things I shouldn't say. Uh, I say those words that I know I'm not supposed to be saying and lose my temper, get mad at other people, and then I get embarrassed. I just can't live this Christian life. Now, that's all the more reason why you need to come to church. Jonas, when you come, doesn't it make you feel better? Well, yeah. Don't you learn something? Well, yeah. That's why you need to come. And besides all that, you'll be around other people who have the very same temptations you have. You mean there are other people who have the same problems I do? They go to that church? That's right. We're not all perfect. We make mistakes, and we're dealing with them just like you have to. But we can help you with our experiences. Well, man, I never really thought of it like that before. Yeah, well, that's how it's important for you to come to church. You get your spirit fed. You see, when you hear God's Word, your spirit, your inward man, gets strong in the Lord. And the next time you're tempted, you're able to say no to that temptation. Yeah, I know what I it's like. I mean, the few times I have gone, it, it it does give me some inner strength. Yeah, well, that's why you need to keep coming. So don't let anybody or anything talk you out of being there. You need to show up so you can feed your spirit. Woo-hoo! 
we got us a mess of fish, Barker Mass. Oh, we sure did. Fishy, fishy in the brook. Barker Mass caught him on the hook. Nicodemus, you're going to fry me in the pan, and I'm going to eat him like a man. Uh, not yet, Barker Mass. i got to eat me some grub first. I'm too hungry. All right, all right. Wait a minute. What? Somebody's been eating my grub. Oh, uh, Nicodemus, somebody's been eating mine, too. Uh, and somebody's been sitting in this chair. Uh, uh, look, Nicodemus, somebody's been sleeping in this bed. Uh, wait a minute. What? Have you seen a little girl about this tall with golden locks? All right, hold it right there, boys. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Bad Jack Slogan! You boys better be glad the sheriff's close by, because if I wasn't afraid he'd hear the gunshots, I'd have shot you both. Nick and Bark. Well, I think I got enough grub here for a couple of days on the trail. Hold it right there. What are you fellas doing here? Get out of here. You're going to jail. Hey, I'll see y'all in church tomorrow. <laughs> oh, you didn't really think I'd leave you, did you? <laughs> Oh, dear. I'm so scared. I got the scariest thoughts running through my mind, and I can't stop them. Hey, Mama! Dad! I want to bring my sleeping bag into your bedroom and put it at the foot of your bed, okay? Okay? Well, they won't answer. They never answer. They always make me stay in here even when I'm afraid. Oh, dear. I don't know why I'm so afraid. I just am. I'm trying to sleep, and I can't. I have all these scary thoughts running through my mind. <laughs> well, I know why you're scared, little fellow. It's because you've been watching the wrong things on TV. <laughs> That's why I like those scary, scary movies, because they put bad thoughts in your mind, and I can remind you of them later on. Hey, kid, you know that big, hairy monster you saw in the movie earlier tonight? Well, he's over there in your closet. Oh, no. I just had this terrible thought. I had this thought that there might be a big hairy monster over there in my closet. Yep, and he's gonna be coming for you any minute. See you later, kid. Sweet nightmares. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. A big hairy monster, and he's gonna come and get me in a minute. Oh, I'm so afraid. What am I gonna do? What did Jeannie say? Let's think. What did Jeannie say? She never gets scared of the dark. What would she do? Let's see. Uh, she would say scriptures. That's what she would do. God is not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Greater is he who is in me than he that's in the world. Well, I'll say scriptures. That's what I'll do. I'll drive those bad thoughts out of my mind. I'll feed my spirit some of God's word, and I'll run those bad thoughts off. Greater is he who is in me than he that's in the world. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. There shall no evil befall me. There, I feel a whole lot better now. I'm going to lay down and go to sleep and get some rest. Bad thoughts. You just have to speak God's word. That's what you got to do. Hey, kid, you have a big monster in your room, remember? God has not given me the spirit of fear, but a power loving of a sound mind. Huh? You made me afraid. I'm getting out of here. Yeah, that's what you got to do. You got to put God's word in your spirit so it'll come out at the right time. <laughs> Hey, Gus, I'm sure glad you found us when you did, because we would have been in a heap of trouble if you hadn't. Yeah, you know, I reckon God was just kind of punishing us since we skipped out on church Sunday. Yeah. You know, hold on just a minute, fellas. That's where you're wrong. Well, God wasn't punishing you. He doesn't get mad just because you skipped church. You got to understand that. Oh, well, now, wait a minute, Gospel Bill. Are you saying that God don't care if you skip out on church now, on Sunday? No, I didn't say that. What I'm saying is this. If the only reason that you go to church is to keep God from being mad at you, then you're going for the wrong reason. You need to go so you can feed your spirit. Feed your spirit? What do you mean? Well, everybody's got a spirit, Barkamas, and you need to feed it so it can grow. I mean, just like you feed your body, you got to feed your spirit. One of the reasons you go to church is to feed your spirit. That's the most important reason you go. Well, I'll tell you this. There's plenty of time to go fishing other times, but on Sunday, we're going to be a going to church. Yeah, we're going to feed our spirit. Welcome to Dry Gulch, USA. You know, this is 160 acres of the most beautiful property in the state of Oklahoma. 
We're going to turn it into a place where kids can have the times of their lives. Come on, I'll show you around. Dry Gulch USA is our week-long summer camp for kids. They'll enjoy unique activities and relive the days of cowboys and Indians in an authentic Old West town. You know, the property that we have here has over one and one quarter miles of shoreline on beautiful Lake Hudson. We even have our own little cove. It's nice and secluded. It'll be a great place for kids to go swimming, canoeing, and having all kinds of fun in the water. We're looking forward to a great time here. We want you to come be a part of it too. For a free brochure, write Dry Gulch USA, Post Office Box 639, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, 74013, or call us at area code 918-250-8688. Hey, come here. I, I want to read you a story out of 2 Chronicles chapter 20 about King Jehoshaphat and how he defeated his enemies. Wait, I got a better idea. Let's all close our eyes and go there right now. Came and knock on the door, the royal palace of the king. It startled old King Jehoshaphat, who was uh, sitting on his throne so much, he just yelled out, uh, Come on in! You see, Jehoshaphat was a very good king. He loved the Lord with all he had. And because of this, all of Judah was blessed throughout the whole land. Well, that servant, he just came busting into the palace, so excited he could barely talk. He said, kick, 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 king, we in big, big trouble. Oh, let me tell you what I just saw. I'm feeling like your God is in you. Feeling like just praise the Lord. We'll fight your battles for you. There's nothing that he won't do. But you must fear not. Uh, that fella said, uh, King, out in the Syrian plains, there are soldiers far as you can see. And they got spears and swords and horses and knives down at the sea by Engedi. More about some Lemonites and all kinds of ites and kings. This don't look like no social call, huh? Ooh, we're outnumbered about a hundred to one. I'm afraid they're gonna kill us all. Oh, King Jehoshaphat commenced to get my mind scared. They called all the people to pray. And God said, You won't even need to fight in this battle. Just stand still and see salvation today. Fear not. Next morning, they got up real early. Old King Jehoshaphat ha had the strangest plan. He said, instead of putting the, the army out front like we usually do, we gonna put the band. So the drums kicked it off like this, man. Could I have a little bass guitar now? Yeah. Yeah, they started moving a little bit then. Uh, uh, could I have a little guitar? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they started walking down the road, and they were starting to feel a little better. And then the orchestra came in playing. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, then the choir started singing something like this. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praising God so much that they just forgot about everything else. And as they turned the corner down by the wilderness, the guy in the front of just let out a big yeah. Down by the watchtower, 
She saw the strangest sight There were hundreds and hundreds of enemy soldiers Laying dead from a horrible fight You see when all those singers and musicians Began to sing, praise the Lord The Lord of hosts, Sam Bush, that enemy army Cause his word is like a two-edged sword So be not your God is in you Be not just praise the Lord He will fight your battles for you There's nothing that he won't do But you See you not Hey, if you're going to live the Christian life, you've got to have a strong spirit. Yeah, you can't have a good Christian life without a strong spirit. Your spirit needs some muscles, man, I'll tell you. If all you do is let your spirit get weak and you don't feed it and you let it get skinny and puny, why, well, you're going to get beat up on by the problems of life. But the Bible tells us that we can feed our spirits and make them strong. In fact, in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, the Bible tells us that we're to drink the milk of God's Word. Now, how do you drink the milk of God's Word? How can you feed your spirit? Does your spirit get fed if you go down to the drive-in and get a hamburger? Or if you have a pizza, are you feeding your spirit? No. All of those things are body food. But this right here, God's Word, is food for your spirit. And when you think about God's Word and learn something from it, that is the same as drinking milk. You know what happens when you drink a lot of milk? It helps your bones to get strong and it helps your teeth to be strong. That's why it's good for you to drink milk. It makes you stronger. You know what? When you were a baby, you drank lots of this stuff. Your mom and dad poured it down you all the time. You used to wake up in the middle of the night screaming, wah, wah, and this is what you were crying for right here. And so mom came in and she fed you that milk, and after you got a tummy full, you quit crying for a while, for a few hours, that is, until you wanted some more. Somebody always had to feed you the milk. Now, when you go to church and you hear a preacher preach and he preaches things from God's Word, that is like drinking God's milk. And that's important. But now that you're a little bit older, Mama doesn't have to feed you. She doesn't wake up in the middle of the night and hear you crying and say, Come on, let's go eat some, some cereal. No, Mom lets you eat for yourself at the dinner table. And that's like eating meat. And the Bible tells us we're to eat meat as well as drink milk. Well, the way that you eat meat and the way you eat God's meat is to study His Word. So, make your spirit strong. Drink milk, eat meat.